After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there, so they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. Of the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, it's only the fourth Gospel, John, that Jesus says that he's thirsty. But all four record that Jesus was given sour wine, or forced on him. But why it was sour is not exactly clear. In John's Gospel, it could even be seen, possibly, as a compassionate act. Those around him hear Jesus say he's thirsty, so they give him a sponge, the only thing around, which happened to be sour wine, vinegar mixed with some herbs, and water. It was originally a mixture used in Greece for medicinal purposes. Or, more likely, given what we read in the other Gospels, this might have been a soldier's joke about Jesus as a king. Sour wine was a routine part of a poor Roman person's diet and would have been no stranger to low-ranking Roman soldiers. And after all, soldiers of powerful imperial regimes sometimes act cruelly toward those whose country, countries they occupy out of sheer boredom, and sometimes fueled by substance abuse. And that day had no, about, no doubt been a very tense one facing down the crowds in Jerusalem. And now that things are settled and the execution is underway, perhaps the Roman soldiers have been enjoying some cheap booze and are acting out. And so then they play out to Jesus, offering him wine as though they might to a real king. But the joke was that it was just the same cheap stuff that they'd been getting drunk on. If the incident of the sour wine reveals the brokenness of the human experience, Jesus' thirst itself speaks, I believe, to the beauty and tragedy of his humanity. Yes, on this day, when we remember that God so loved the world that God, God's Son died for us, we remember that Jesus was fully God and fully human. And to thirst is human. Christ's thirst, though, was not only physical, he also thirsted for righteousness. And that is a gift God has given us as humans, alongside our need for the thirst, uh, the, to have our thirst quenched by water. When we follow in Christ's footsteps, we find the fullest expression of humanity in this Son of God. Christ walked the way of the cross because of his trust in God and because of his thirst for righteousness. In the Beatitudes of the Sermon on the Mount, as recorded in the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be ch called children of God. Jesus spoke these words of encouragement in a context in which it was not immediately clear to his listeners that what he was saying would be fulfilled. They lived in a land ruled by a foreign empire. They could expect to be pushed around by soldiers and fleeced by tax collectors who were reviled not only for their thievery, but for their collaboration with the Roman occupation. They frequently, the people that is, the people frequently witnessed the lack of mercy that Rome showed to those who challenged its authority. 
And so it's somewhat ironic about these uh, leaders saying, uh, you're no friend of the emperor, Pilate, if you don't punish him, if you don't crucify him. Pilate, of course, though, we always must remember, did have the power in that situation. And it was the Roman government who crucified Jesus. Let us not forget that. In these Beatitudes of Matthew, Jesus envisions a world reoriented around the values of God. Jesus believed that we as humans thirst for righteousness, that we hope for a just world, a merciful world, a peaceful world. Jesus did not promise to bring that world about through political action or military might. Jesus would not be a king in the mold of David, a king to restore Israel to its glory. But rather, Jesus said that by following the path of righteousness, by treating one another as though they are children of God, and that means not just at an individual level, but also at a societal level, by following the path of righteousness, and by remembering that the kingdom of heaven is an inner state cultivated by spiritual practices as well as an outer state cultivated by societal practices. By saying, by following the path of righteousness, Jesus is saying, you will find the true way of living in the world as children of God. Jesus said, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world and forfeit their life? On this day, Good Friday, we confront Jesus' death on the cross. And by doing so, his words about taking up our own crosses, follow him, become really scary. But he warns us that to live our life for ourselves alone, that's those who want to save their lives, that to live our, li our lives for ourselves alone, if we do that, we'll fail in living life to its true fullness. Instead, the only way to truly live, to truly live the life that God intends for us, to find our lives, the only way to do that is to not only live for ourselves alone, but also for God and for one another. And that is the thirst for righteousness that is the gift from God that we've been given. To thirst for righteousness is just as human as the physical thirst, that need that we've been given. Jesus felt both of these as a human. As the Son of God, he could quench spiritual thirst. When Jesus met a Samaritan woman at a well, he was thirsty and asked for water. She was amazed that he, a Jew, asked water of her, a Samaritan. St. John tells us, Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him. He would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give them will become in them a spring of water, gushing up to eternal life. Through his life of self-offering that led to death on the cross, and through the victory over death that Christ wins in the resurrection, Jesus becomes, for us, 
spiritual water that will sustain us and renew our lives. We don't have to go seeking for a mythic fountain of youth because we have a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. Life with God. And eternal life, while continuing after death, actually begins right here, right now. Christ died so that we might live both in this world and in the world to come. That we might live looking to his life of self-offering and his love as a guide for how to live our lives. We thirst for righteousness. We thirst for God because we are human. And God has created this thirst in us just as God created the thirst for water. God created in us the thirst for righteousness, for godliness, for God's self, because the Holy One first thirsted for us. The creator of the universe made us to be in relationship with the divine and with one another because our Trinitarian God is inherently relational. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Trinity speaks to the nature of God as always giving and receiving love. St. Augustine described the Trinity as lover, beloved, and love. As children of this God of love and relationship, we thirst for God and one another, just as God thirsts for us. On the cross, Jesus, knowing that all was finished, said, I am thirsty. He was thirsty because he was human and he needed water. He was thirsty because he had come to the cross to fulfill scripture. He was thirsty because he craved righteousness. He was thirsty because he yearned to share the living water of the gift, the grace of God with a human people thirsty for righteousness and parched for abundant life, true life. Jesus was thirsty because he was, he is the Son of God and God's very nature is love and deep yearning for relationship. Jesus was thirsty. And we, too, are thirsty. Thirsty for righteousness. Thirsty for that just world. Thirsty for relationship. And we are thirsty because God is thirsty. God is thirsty for us to be in relationship with us. And that is why Christ came here. And that is why Christ died here for us. This day, let us drink from the living water given to us in Christ. Amen.